dynamics. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So today will be a Blackboard presentation because I think it's better for the... Well, we have... Uh, you, uh, you have handwritten notes that you can download from the website, no? uh, um, which are the ones that I'm going to follow. But I think for this type of, of lesson, which is, yesterday was a kind of introduction of the, of the topic, but today we are going to introduce uh, concept, mathematical concepts uh, which are better in the Blackboard, okay? If, uh, well. So this is the lesson two which is information theory, well, basic, basic aspects and basic concepts of information theory. Uh, information theory is uh, essentially the theory developed by Claude Shannon in 1948. He wrote two papers. Uh, his idea was more to, uh, to a, Actually, the, the title of those papers is uh, the, the Mathematical Theory of Communication. So it, it's, it's a theory of, of uh, communication channels. But uh, he introduced the idea of, uh, of uh, information and so on. So um, there is some confusion with, um, with the concept of information. Uh, um, I'm going to introduce uh, um, what in some in some Maybe you have here about this. Well, this uh, you have a you have a random variable. Let's say discrete random variable. Uh, discrete. And um, uh, the, this random variable has a, um, a, a distribution. Let's call it a p sub i. No, this is the probability that my random variable, oh, let me see the notation that I'm using. Um, yeah, we use this one, px. Usually we, we, uh, we use x for continuous variables, but here to, uh, I will use x. Sometimes in, in, in mathematics, we also uh, indicate uh, by a sub index the random variable because this is not, this is not really, it, this is a just a, vari a, a, a dummy variable that you can uh, replace by a number or by y or by x squared or by whatever. So to indicate that this is the probability distribution of the variable x and this is actually the probability that x is equal to a small x, and then we indicate it like that. So you can replace small x by, a, by five, six, or whatever, okay? But in physics, sometimes we just uh, omit this because this, this letter tells you, more, tells you what is the variable that you are talking about. But, uh, we will use this. So, so if you have this situation, uh, a random variable with this distribution, uh, the Shannon uh, entropy or Shannon uncertainty is defined as uh, h of x. We will use also this uh, h of px. We will use these notations. Sometimes we indicate the dependency of uh, on, on on the random variable or on the distribution is defined as the sum of p log p. And um, and probably you have seen this formula. This is also the same formula that, uh, in, in Gibbs ent entropy in, in the statistical mechanics. Um, uh, I prefer to call this uncertainty, but entropy, because I, I, entropy is a little bit confusing in the sense that uh, people can confuse this Shannon entropy with thermodynamic entropy. We will see that one of the main uh, goals or main, uh, um, yeah, main goals of uh, thermodynamics of information is to prove that Shannon entropy is equal 
or can be equal in some situations to thermodynamic entropy. But don't take this for granted. I mean, the, 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 and this is a com common mistake in, in thermodynamics and in information theory to consider this as, 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 as the thermodynamic entropy. Actually, uh, I think the, the, the original idea of uh, Shannon is to call this uncertainty. And Shannon himself tells a story that at the end of his life, he, he said that it was a lie. But because, because Shannon was, I mean, <laughs> she, he was a, a character and he had a sense of humor. So he, he told the story that he was, um, when he wrote the paper, he asked von Neumann, John von Neumann, uh, uh, how can I call this, this magnitude? And von Neumann told him, call, call, call it entropy for two reasons. First, because Gibbs already used this formula for entropy. And second, because nobody knows what entropy is. So you will win any argument or anything. So, and he's right that uh, nobody knows really what thermodynamic entropy is. Well, we know how to use it, but uh, uh, it's a, it's a complicated, I mean, it's a controversial concept. So, but let's call it entropy. So um, mm, uh, this sum runs over all the values of uh, x, where, where p is, uh, this, this sum runs over all the values where p x is uh, different from 0. If uh, p is 0, this is ill-defined, but uh, let's say if you take the limit of epsilon log epsilon when epsilon goes to 0, this goes to zero. So you can safely, I mean, it's a, it's the, the definition is continuous in P, in the sense that if you have very small P's that tend to zero, uh, uh, the entropy is continuous. I usually include here, uh, uh, sorry, the, I, 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 um, I write the, the, let me write it here because there's a, I write this as a log of, uh, a generic logarithm in, in any base, and I usually also multiply this by k um, to, to express the following thing that, um, uh, so this is my definition of entropy, uh, p x log, uh, let's put here log a p x x. And um, uh, you have different possibilities. This is dimensionless if this k is not here. So entropy, Shannon entropy, the original version of Shannon entropy, which is with, without this k, is dimensionless. Uh, so, but usually we call, uh, this is, we use some units to quantify entropy. Uh, if k is equal one, which is the original definition, and, and A is equal to two, uh, uh, you have P log P in base two. This is, uh, um, we call this number uh, entropy in bits. So this is uh, the, the unit that you use is bits. If uh, the logarithm is the natural logarithm, the Neperian logarithm of base E, then uh, we call, um, uh, we say that the entropy is expressed in nuts. This is uh, in, uh, let's say, bits, nuts. And if k is the Boltzmann constant, uh, uh, we call this um, the unit is the unit of, this is dimension, well, we, we say Boltzmann constant, and this is uh, the natural logarithm. Then the unit is just uh, the unit of K, which is uh, energy divided by temperature. So it, this is joules divided by Kelvin. Um, but uh, we are going to reserve in, uh, Instead of using this, we, we, we will use also this letter, especially when, uh, when, the, when, the, uh, when this is Boltzmann constant, we will use the letter S in the, instead of H. I'm writing a book on that, and I was like one week thinking of how to uh, 
select the notation, the best notation for the, and at the, at the beginning I had two letters, H for the Shannon entropy and S for the Shannon entropy expressing used by Cayley. And then after one week of thinking, <laughs> I, I decided to, to use just S. So in the book, everything will be S because it's the same quantity expressed in different units. There is a, I mean, there is no, um, so we have three, three types of units to, to express uncertainty, which is bits, nuts, and just by Kelvin. Bits is very nice because the, the, the Shannon uncertainty has a very, um, very simple uh, interpretation, and this is what you have to keep in mind. Uh, H is uh, the, when you express H in bits, is the number of bits that you need on average to express X, okay? So for instance, if X is uh, left, right, like we did yesterday in the, in the Silar engine, or if we uh, throw a coin and X is the, the outcome of the, of the coin, and it's one half probability heads, one half probability um, uh, crosses, then uh, uh, you put it here, you know, if PX, Px is, uh, let's say, uh, one half if x is left and one half if x is right, uh, then this, uh, uh, this, the uncertainty of this is, my, is the sum of minus one half uh, log in bits one half minus one half log one half, and this is one bit, okay? So any binary random variable that uh, can take uh, the two values with the same probability, one half, this is a random bit. And if instead of ref, right, left, you put zero, one. So a bit in, the, in Shannon theory is the uncertainty of a random bit, of a, of a binary uh, digit that can take on the value zero with probability one half and the value of one with probability one half. And, and we, we, we will see that this is general, that H of X is the average number of bits needed to Describe x. So if x is, is binary, I need just one bit. And, uh, but you can have more complicated situations. Uh, uh, I, I also like to, to, uh, to illustrate this as the number, uh, also is the number of just no questions that you need to guess x. So if x, you are playing one of these games where you you think of uh, his character of, of a person, and you have to ask yes no questions to to guess uh, to figure out who, who is the person. Uh, H of this random variable, which is the, 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 the person, is um, is the number the average number of questions that you have to make uh, to to guess the the person on average. And this is the number of bits because it's. Yes, no question is like one bit. So if it's a, we can, um, we will prove this uh, in, in, in a moment. That, um, well, in the notes you have a proof, but I will, I, I will skip it because I want to, you can, uh, I want to, to do the, the general proof. You can also um, have, um, in quantum mechanics, we are not going to work too much on quantum mechanics, but on quantum mechanics, you can define also this entropy for, um, for a, the, equivalent, the equivalent of a probability distribution. In quantum mechanics, is the, 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 the density matrix, rho. So uh, you can have the entropy of a density matrix is, um, is, um, um, the, is the trace of rho log rho. This is a quantum density matrix.
And this uh, formula, this is, this is known as von Neumann uh, entropy, or quantum entropy. You know that the trace, it replaces, in quantum, the trace uh, plays the same role as the sum in classical uh, systems. So this is P log P is, uh, instead of a sum, you have the trace. And in the, the, in the, in the basis where the, the density matrix is diagonal, the Shannon entropy and the von Neumann entropy are the same thing. Okay, but the von, von Neumann entropy is more general. Now, uh, um, let's uh, think of um, the problem. Uh, uh, what is the relationship between Shannon entropy and thermodynamic entropy? And this is uh, the most subtle issue in, in this course. And it's something that you have to prove. In, in, even in textbooks of statistical mechanics, there, there is an approach by James in, to, to derive the ensembles in statistical mechanics, which is to, uh, to start with the, with the Shannon entropy and to maximize the Shannon entropy under some constraints. Maybe in some of your universities you have used this, uh, this approach. This approach is okay, but, um, but uh, you are implicitly assuming some meaning for the Shannon entropy that uh, uh, is not clear that can be applied to physics. So I, I, I don't like this approach because it is not, first it's an approach that does not connect statistical mechanics with mechanics, which I think is, is, uh, is, uh, is essential to understand statistical mechanics. And second, it, uh, it, it assumes implicitly some uh, properties like the, for the, for the Shannon entropy that must be maximized, must be maximum uh, in some situations, which is something that it is not clear at all. So uh, it's, um, it's more a, a kind of epistemological approach, and I, I, I don't, I, that I don't, that I think has some problems. So uh, we cannot, uh, this is very important, we cannot take for granted that the Shannon entropy is equal to the thermodynamic entropy. No, we have to prove it. In equilibrium, it's easy to prove. So. Uh, for, for a physical system in equilibrium, uh, in equilibrium, this is important. So it's true that the, uh, we have, uh, if we have a discrete number of states, the equilibrium uh, probability density, uh, let's say of a state I, is the exponential of minus beta EI divided by C. EI is the energy of state I, and C is the, is the partition function. And if you calculate the, the Shannon entropy, let's use now this letter, S, uh, then it's minus K. K is the Boltzmann constant, I do. And then it's the sum over I of all the states of rho and the log of rho, and the log of rho, if you take the logarithm of this, is minus beta EI minus log of Z. And uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, this part, this is uh, one over KT, remember that beta is one over KT. So uh, if uh, this is minus, um, uh, uh, this, is, this is the probability to have an energy EI uh, multiplied by EI. So this is the average energy. Let's put it like that. The average energy divided by T. Uh, and this is uh, minus K. If I multiply and divide by T, I get uh, minus plus 1 over T uh, KT log C. This is the free energy. In equilibrium, we will define something called the non-equilibrium free energy, but now it's the, the equilibrium free energy. So uh, we have that um, uh, uh, the entropy is minus the uh, average energy, let's call this E, minus the average energy, and this is uh, minus the, remember in, in the statistical mechanics, the free energy is minus KT log Z, so this is minus uh, um, K minus Sorry, this is, uh, uh, there is uh, this K, uh, I have uh, 
kt and k log c, so I have to, no, it's fine, no, it's fine. And, uh, and this is minus f divided by t. Let me see if I have everything, yeah. So, uh, it's okay, no? No, it's not okay. Uh, ah, this minus with this minus is plus. And this minus with this minus is plus, but the free energy is defined like that. So this is plus, and then you have that f, this is equivalent that f is e minus ts. So, uh, which is, I mean, in, it, it's, co it's consistent with the definition of entropy in thermodynamics, that the, you can define entropy from the free energy or the free energy from the entropy, but in, in any case, you can reproduce the mathematical uh, structure of thermodynamics uh, in the canonical ensemble, using the canonical, in, in the canonical ensemble, using as a definition of entropy the Shannon entropy. So for equilibrium, Shannon entropy is equivalent to thermodynamic entropy. It's equal to thermodynamic entropy. but not in general, in particular not in equilibrium. Okay, one can ask, so it's, it's all, this is it's always true that uh, I can use Shannon entropy as a thermodynamic entropy. There are some, there is a lot of discussion on that. So, uh, mm, for instance, a, a Shannon entropy has a problem when you have, in the, you have the phase space of your system, of a physical system, this is the phase space, and each point here is the position and the momenta of all the particles. For instance, you have a gas, and Q and P is the position, uh, and momenta of all the particles. And you def this is the way we, we, in statistical mechanics, we express this microstate of a system. And you have a, a probability distribution that evolves in time because you have a Hamiltonian dynamics here. So uh, the, it's easy to prove that the entropy of this row uh, is constant. I don't know if you have done this, ex this exercise, but it is a typical exercise in statistical mechanics to prove that the Shannon entropy is constant. It's always constant. I mean, it doesn't depend on the process. It's a, it's a, it's a theorem that is easy to prove. Is because? No, no, no. Rho is not constant. Rho, well, I don't want to enter into details here. Rho verifies something called the Liouville equation. For instance, the, the, the simplest case is that if you assume, for instance, if, if, if rho is a, is a kind of a, a Gaussian center in, in a microstate, this microstate has a crazy dynamics. This microstate is evolves like that, and then this, uh, uh, this probability distribution, this rho, will evolve crazy. I mean, the, the, the evolution is crazy, but it's true that if you compute this, this is constant. Uh, I don't want to, the, 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 the proof is not so easy, well, it's not so easy, it's not so difficult. It's, uh, you have to make the, the, the time derivative of this, you make the time derivative of this, and then you, you have the, the time derivative of this is the derivative of, uh, of well, you have to make the derivative of this, the derivative of this, and then you work with the properties of the, of the Liouvillean, and you can find that the, the entropy is constant. But I think it's a, a little bit complicated. I don't want to... Uh, so the, this is the main objection that people um, um, uh, uses to say that the Shannon entropy is not a, 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 thermal, a thermodynamic entropy. Because in an irreversible process, the entropy should be... Should, 
increase. And, it, and here it never increases. How people can uh, um, fix this? Well, what, what you say is that if you start this row, it's true that it's constant, but this row, if you start with a row uh, around some microstate, uh, the evolution is very, very complicated, and then you have some kind of coarse graining. So what a macroscopic observer sees is not this row in all its details, but something which is a smooth row. And when you smooth or you coarse grain the row, then it's easy to prove that the shadow entropy always increases. And this is, in this way, people uh, make uh, compatible the, the, the Shannon entropy and the, and the thermodynamic entropy. But I so, have sorry. this. Just so, so when you don't have a time dependent Hamiltonian, then rho is a constant of the motion, right? Uh, sorry? Or, uh, when you have, uh, don't have a time dependent uh, Hamiltonian, then rho is a constant. No, 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 no. Rho is not a constant. Hmm? The energy is a constant, but rho is not a constant. Rho depends on the initial condition. Rho is a constant only for equilibrium. I mean, this rho is a constant, of course. Uh, uh, when you have this, this uh, rho is constant. Rho QPT actually is constant. I mean, if and only if rho is a function, rho is a function of the Hamiltonian. Yeah. Which is the case in equilibrium, but not, not in non-equilibrium. You can have a, uh, whatever. Um, rho is the probability density. But that is uh, what Liouville theorem tells. I mean, if, uh, the Hamiltonian no. is... No. Liouville theorem tells you that if you take a... We are talking not about, about uh, volumes in phase space. Volume in phase space is constant. This is Liouville theorem. So if you start, if you start with a volume, uh, you can... If you start with a, a, a bunch of points here and you let the points evolve, they will evolve like that, very complicated, and the volume, the volume of this guy is equal to the volume of this guy. This is Liouville theorem. But now suppose that you, you start, but, but the volume, the, I mean, the, the set changes in time, and the forms and so on. And the probability distribution, if you like, is a uniform distribution here, for instance. It will be a uniform distribution here, but uh, it will evolve. So the, the probability density of a system, otherwise we didn't have non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. Well, you will an operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's constant, it's constant only yeah. if, if it's a function if, of H. Uh, if it is uh, Q mesh with H, not uh, if H uh, is dependent or independent of time. Uh, and uh, you, you, you say uh, that uh, is uh, this in the case uh, of the system in the equilibrium, equilibrium. Do you mean the equilibrium with the bar? In this case, you can you can extend this. This is this is the canonical ensemble. So this this uh, describes a system in equilibrium with a thermal bath. Uh, uh, but you can extend this. You can prove that Shannon entropy is 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 equal to the thermodynamic entropy. Yeah for any equilibrium state, not only the canonical, but the microcanonical, the grand canonical, etc. Okay, for uh, this case, uh, there is, there is uh, some difference between if the distribution is Gaussian or not Gaussian? No. Uh, the solutions of uh, this equation, if you put as initial condition a Gaussian, uh, the only thing, it, it even it does not remain Gaussian. A Gaussian remains Gaussian only if the evolution is linear. Yeah. And the Hamiltonian evolution is not linear. Okay. So Thank you. you will get a completely. Okay, this is a, uh, these are um, um, typical arguments to discuss, to, uh, of this discussion of whether the Shannon entropy can be identified with the, with the um, uh, thermodynamic entropy. But I, ha I will have another argument. So. Oh, uh, can, can you repeat for a please? The argument. Uh, can you repeat the argument why taking a point in the phase space and taking the cross-graining and the, the smooth 
set in the fa in the phase space is different for the Shannon entropy and it's different from like I didn't get the the argument why taking a point or doing the cross graining and taking the evolution um, makes different the the evolution of the entropy uh, I don't remember what you said no what I said is that if you uh, okay that okay this was just a, a kind of footnote I didn't want to enter in, in, because this is I mean, it's, it's not it's difficult, but it's uh, kind of complicated too because you have to explain you will theorem, you will equation, and so on. But uh, the idea is that uh, no matter how you start, you can start with any row. The row can be a delta in a microstate, a Gaussian in a microstate. It's uh, what happens, or 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 the row can be like that, like like uh, uniform here and zero elsewhere. So. What happens under the Hamiltonian evolution is that this row has a very complicated form, but the Shannon entropy of this row is constant. This is a theorem which is easy to prove for a time-dependent Hamiltonian or for constant Hamiltonian. So, um, and, um, uh, and, and then, but what it, what the, 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 let's say, what it's happening is that this row is very, is, the uncertainty is, is constant, but it's so complicated that any cost graining or a smooth uh, uh, um, or, or uh, some type of is, is, uh, you make the smoother the, the, the function, um, this increases the Shannon entropy. And the proof of that, this is what you are asking, no? Why, why, why cost graining increases? Um, mm -hmm. I will give the proof later on, because otherwise. But you can imagine that. Um, you can imagine the following. For instance, the, the typical evolution is like that. Let me, let me give you a, 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 an intuitive explanation. The typical evolution of a set in a Hamiltonian dynamics is that you create a lot of filaments like that. Uh, it's very comp It's like that. So, um, uh, and the Shannon entropy of this is equal to this. For uniform distributions, the Shannon entropy is the volume. So the, this volume is equal to this volume, and this is a Liouville theorem. So it's constant. So, uh, but what happens uh, that uh, this, this complicated set for a macroscopic observer, the macroscopic observer cannot distinguish between these details. So what the macroscopic observer sees is a kind of something like that. And this volume is always bigger. And this is the idea, okay, the intuitive idea. But you can make this more, you can make this not for volumes, also for, for probability distributions. Okay, but uh, uh, I, I, I'm happy with uh, this discussion because this is, uh, this is one of the goals of the course, to, to let you know that, uh, to, to ref reflect on the differences between Shannon and, and, uh, and thermodynamic entropy. For me, one of the arguments, this is, this is a good argument that uh, this, Shannon entropy by itself cannot be a, a measure of entropy unless you uh, prescribe some degradation of the information in row. This is the point. Um, but there is also a very, a very simple uh, argument. If you have, a, a, if you have a, 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 a potential like that, suppose that you have a Brownian particle, one particle, no, in optical tweezers or whatever. So uh, you have a Brownian particle and um, you know the equilibrium is that the row of x, this is x, this is the equilibrium, let's say that this is a harmonic oscillator, the equilibrium distribution is this one, no? Beta m omega square x squared divided by 2, divided by some partition function. Um, if I just, if I take my particle, and I put my particle exactly with the same distribution, or I move my optical trap. This is an optical trap, no? And I move my optical trap. Uh -huh. It's clear that this is out of equilibrium. This situation, I mean, this is in equilibrium. This is very far from equilibrium. Actually, from this distribution, I can get uh, energy or work or whatever I like. And, uh, but the shadow entropy is the same here and here. So it's clear that uh, Shannon entropy is not by itself something that tells you how far a system is from equilibrium or things like that. 
you need a combination of, of rho, this is rho, and the Hamiltonian, in this case the potential. And uh, so, Sharon entropy is not the, the, uh, enough to tell you how a system is, uh, in, what is the thermodynamic system, the thermodynamic state of a system, okay? So uh, we will go back to this example by defining something, we will use Shannon entropy as thermodynamic entropy by combined with the Hamiltonian. And then we will get, we will see that what makes sense for systems in, out of equilibrium is the, uh, actually is, is the free energy, not the entropy. But, uh, but I'm just uh, announcing what we will see tomorrow. Eh? Entropy is more general than... Yeah, Neumann, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's more general than uh, Shannon entropy. And in some people, uh, in stochastic thermodynamic in and out equilibrium, I can see that, uh, say, the Van Neumann entropy uh, is equivalent to uh, the entropy production plus the entropy exchange. And so she no, for quantum but system, for Neumann entropy, is exactly plays the same role as, as Shannon entropy. Yeah, for that I ask him why you... It's, it has the same problem. For example, Neumann entropy is constant under Hamiltonian evolution. So it has the same problems. As, uh, everything that we have said for Shannon entropy and classical systems, you can say it for Neumann yeah, entropy. Yeah, yeah. For this, I ask. Because so what's the question? I have some papers that uh, talking about uh, stochastic thermodynamic in and out equilibrium. And uh, there is an equivalent between, uh, between uh, the Van Neumann entropy, he say, is equivalent to equal uh, the entropy production plus the entropy exchange. That is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, well, we are going that to is, see this, but this you can do this with Boltzmann. I don't understand the. Yeah, question. Boltzmann and Van Neumann entropy. So there is equivalent between yeah, yeah. Boltzmann and uh, Van Neumann entropy. No, uh, bon, and von Neumann and Shannon. There is an equivalent between von Neumann and Shannon, but not von Neumann and Boltzmann. Okay, but Boltzmann first, but there is no Boltzmann entropy for, for quantum systems. Yeah, I know. So it is, uh, but we will see this tomorrow. Uh, when we, uh, uh, tomorrow we will see stochastic thermodynamics and, apply, and we will apply this to thermodynamics. But uh, so far, the only thing that I want here is to make you think that maybe you have studied before that Shannon entropy is just thermodynamic entropy is to, 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 uh, to tell you that this is not true. Through all this. Okay, but tomorrow we will go to this point. Yeah. The argument was the entropy is constantly computed under a Hamiltonian evolution, but it should increase. And you say it should increase because we, the observer, it sees like some volume and it doesn't have the precise details of the volume, so it says a bigger, it, it, it sees a bigger one. Yeah. But, I mean, physically, for me, it's okay, but still, like, mathematically, I don't see why the observer should see a bigger volume. I don't know. This is, of course, there is no a mathematical, a, a mathematical, let's say, a formulation of that. And actually, uh, this is a kind of epistemological way of reasoning, I mean, a epistemological argument. You have to include in the theory a degradation of information because of the macroscopic nature of the observer or something like that. And this is completely, this is completely, let's say, subjective or arbitrary or... So, so in the end, if they are compatible, they have a degradation of information. The Shannon so entropy the Shannon, could the play, entropy. yeah, 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 in this, in this case could play, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to say that the that the, the that when you do this, you, you equilibrate a Brownian particle in an optical tweezer, and suddenly you move it. The entropy of this row is the same, but clearly the system has departed from equilibrium. So uh, and and the Shannon entropy cannot reflect this. When when the system is out of equilibrium, you can do a lot of things. You can get work from it. You can, I mean. Uh, this, is a, this is a completely different situation from this one. 
Uh, and even though uh, this is not, the Sharon entropy cannot reflect this, OK? OK, let's, uh, uh, so uh, this is the mixture of uh, information theory and, um, and uh, I mean, this is, all this discussion is very interesting, but it is the, the, the um, uh, interplay between information theory and thermodynamics. Now let me just focus on information theory because this is lesson two, it's information theory. So we have introduced the Shannon entropy. As I said, the, the, the best way of imagining the, the, the Shannon entropy is to imagine that it's the number of bits that you need to describe something. Okay? This is, this is uh, what you have to keep in mind. Uh, let's introduce the second uh, concept, which is called mutual information. Mutual information is uh, 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 defined for two variables. And it's defined like that. By definition, is um, the sum of Pxi. I will use log, but well, let me use log in general. This is the joint distribution. This is the joint distribution. These are the marginals. So this is the probability of finding x. This is the probability of finding i, y. And this is the mutual information. Uh, you can write this mutual information in different ways. For instance, uh, this is also equal to By definition, uh, the joint probability distribution divided by the marginal is the conditional distribution. So I can uh, write this also like that. For instance, if I combine this, in this case, combine this and this, I get P X Y X. This is uh, this is the conditional probability. divided by Px. And uh, uh, you, you can use these two equations or two definitions to express the mutual information in terms of Shannon entropies. For instance, if you take the first one, uh, here I have P log P. The joint, log the joint. This is minus h of the joint distribution. And then you have a p log p x, sum over x and y. If I sum, uh, if I take this, 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 uh, let's, let's do it here. If I take this one, this term, Here, uh, this is this is uh, does not depend on y. So when I sum over y, I get here, I get the marginal. So this the term that comes from the log of p x is minus p x log p x is h of x. And if you do the same with p log py, is the h of y. So uh, the mutual information can be expressed in this way. And also, if you take this one, um, here, uh, uh, this is uh, p uh, log px is hx. 
and what remains is this quantity P of the joint log, the conditional, this is called the conditional entropy. So uh, by definition, this conditional entropy is the sum over x and y of px minus px y x y log of px the conditional so the mutual information has to these two ways of writing and of course it's symmetric you see that it's symmetric the definition under x and y so we can also write this as h y minus h This is the mutual information. Uh, why this definition? Well, if, if you think of the mm, of this first formula, this is the number of bits you need to describe x. This is the number of bits that you need to describe y. And this is the number of bits that you need to describe the pair. If the pair, I mean, so this is the number of bits that you save if you take into account correlations. Uh, because this is, if, this is the, the, the bits you need to describe x by, by itself. This is y. But when you describe the pair, x, y, this is positive, by the way. You need, uh, you need less bits to describe, to describe the pair than to describe independently x and y. So this is a. a this, the mutual information is a measure of the correlation between x and y. This is something that you can see here in the first definition. If x and y are independent, this joint distribution factorizes and this is zero. So i is zero if x and y are independent. OK, this is uh, uh, the first one important property. But the second one is even more important, the second formula. Because uh, suppose that, uh, suppose that uh, you have x, a random variable, no? And, uh, and you make, uh, suppose that x is, is, uh, is you, you, you make a question about x to somebody who knows x. Suppose that x, you know x, no? It's a number between 1 and 100, let's say. And I ask you, is odd the number or is even? And then you tell me yes, no. Or, uh, but you can lie. No? Bef uh, uh, before we saw that uh, in this game of uh, yes, no questions, you always say the truth. And, and then the number of questions is h, no? The number of questions that I need. But, Suppose that he, he can lie. Then um, uh, how my uncertainty is reduced not by, uh, uh, by the, uh, I mean, this, this formula, this mutual information tells you how the uncertainty is reduced when you make a question about x. I will, I will uh, show you this now. So suppose you have x and you ask a question. And the answer to the question, uh, is why? Why can be now, yes, no, or can be whatever, can be any, anything. Actually, this, uh, you have the random variable. This is the same if you have a system, a physical system, and you make a measurement. And why is the output of the measurement? It's the same thing. So you have a, a random variable. You can ask a question. You inquire about the random variable x. And you get an answer y, OK? But this answer y can be, can be in, or the outcome of a measurement can be subject to some error. So what you have is a probability that your answer uh, is y whenever the system is in a state x, OK? And of course, if, if, if uh, in, in an error-free 
or uh, if this is an error-free measurement, no, or if the if the if if you when I ask you the question, you don't lie, then this will be a delta, no? P i x, it will be uh, it will be one if uh, if uh, one or zero, let's say, no. If I ask if I ask you. Uh, is the number odd or is the number even? If the number is odd, it's one, and the number, if the number is even, it's zero, the probability. But suppose that you have some probability to lie, which is the same as in, in, in the measurement. Uh, what is the... What is the information after the question? What is the uncertainty, sorry, uh, after the question? Uh, after the after the question, I have to update my probability. This is bias uh, statistics. I update my. Uh, this is the updated. This is the new distribution, incorporating the information that I know. This is the outcome of the measurement. Okay. The outcome of the question or the answer to the question, the question or measurement. And using uh, by this formula, this is uh, 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 I guess you know this formula P A B. The, we have used this formula before, no? The conditional probability is the joint probability divided by the, the, the probability of the condition. So uh, you can uh, use this formula to get um, to get uh, this is Py and this is Px. Uh, uh, this is, let's say, what characterizes your measurement apparatus, no? And if I divide, uh, if I multiply by Px, this is the joint probability, and this is the this is called the bias formula, and this is my new, uh, my new, um, uh, my my new probability distribution. What is the uncertainty of this new probability distribution? It's minus the sum over x of p log p. And this depends on the outcome. Of course, some outcomes, if I ask you, uh, you, you think a number from, from 0 to 10, and I ask you, is the number 10? And you say, yes, then this is a lot of information. And you tell me, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very small information. So the information depends on the outcome. But usually, I'm interested on averages. So uh, the average of uh, this, When I take this average, put it like that, I take the average of this over all possible answers or all possible outcomes, which is pi. This is called the conditional uncertainty, or the conditional entropy. So the conditional entropy is, uh, is the average of the number of bits that I need to describe x once I've incorporated the information from the, from the measurement, OK? So this is the uncertainty. And, and let's put it now here, x, y, 
I multiply this by this, so I get PY I get this formula. And this is the number of bits that I need to describe x after I incorporate or after I update my, 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 my uh, probability distribution using the information after the mesom. And now this formula is, has a very nice interpretation. It is a, uh, let me write it here. I, I will write it like that. I, I pass this there. And I write it like that. And you see, now the, 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 the deep meaning of the mutual information. I have, some, I have a random variable. I have some uncertainty with this random variable. This could be the state of a system, the number that he has thought, or whatever. I have a, some situation with some randomness. And this, situation, this has some uncertainty, h of x. Now I inquire about x. I make an experiment, I make an, an, a, a question, I, 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 I extract some energy, and I obtain y, which is the answer to my question or the outcome of my measurement. This information decreases the uncertainty, and this is what this expresses. hx condition to y, the conditional entropy, is the uncertainty after the measurement and is equal to the information, to the uncertainty before the measurement minus the mutual information. So the mutual information is the reduction of the uncertainty when I make a question or when I make a measurement. And this is the, uh, this is, uh, the main uh, meaning of mutual information. Actually, some people call H information. Some people think that Shannon information is Roll of row. No, this is the uncertainty. Information is what you get. I mean, it's information is the reduction of the uncertainty. And, and, and the, the true uh, measure of information uh, is y, is i, is the mutual information. It's the information that y provides about x. And it's, it turns out to be symmetric because we have proved that it's symmetric. It's also the information that X provides about Y. But this is the, the, um, the, the meaning of the mutual information that you have. Average number, always. You can prove that this is that i is always positive. I will not prove this. This is a simple proof using any of these formulas. You can prove it, but I will not prove it. So you can, whenever you ask a question, you have really a reduction in uncertainty. When, if 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 the answer to the question, I mean, if it is a real liar and he just uh, invent the, the answer every time, or if I have a, a, a completely uh, a, a measurement, but the error is so big that the y is completely independent of the real state of the system, then the reduction is zero, of course. So it, let me finish one, with, with one th thing. Uh, so if y and x are independent, um, then this is not, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this is zero, so the, 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 the y does not provide any information about x. The other extreme is this one. If, uh, if, um, if I have an error free, if I have an error free measurement,
then uh, the, uh, the mutual information, uh, you can get it from here. Uh, if 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 uh, the the measure the answer is uh, is uh, um, is determ determined by x, no, we are in this case. If 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 uh, I mean y is a property, maybe is if x is a number, y could be is an odd number or is an even number or is my number bigger than 100 or whatever, and and then. When, the, when there is no error in the measurement, this is one and zero. So this means that the conditional uh, uh, uncertainty of y, if I know x, if I know the state of the system, I know the answer. So this is zero. There is no uncertainty in error-free measurements. Uh, the state of my system um, de determines the answer or, or the outcome of the measurement. So in error-free measurement, you see that the, the mutual information is just the uncertainty of the, is the uncertainty of the, or the entropy of the answer or the outcome. This is why many people also, uh, 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 there is a confusion between mutual information and Shannon entropy, or Shannon entropy is considered uh, information. Shannon entropy sometimes, for, for instance, is, for uh, storing, storing information can be considered a, a measure of information. But what it is really a measure of information is the mutual information. It's I, eh? not H. OK? So whenever you, you have, maybe you have here, ah, the standard information and so on, uh, uh, is not true. Uh, H is a measure of uncertainty. Information is the reduction of uncertainty, which is I, which is the mutual information. Yeah. yeah, of course. In the in the restore to zero process, you have a variable, random variable, which is the, the state of the system, the mesos, the macro script, the macro state of the system, which can be zero one. So you have the Shannon entropy. The Shannon entropy there is uh, is, um, is one bit, and then you go to zero, which is zero. there is no uncertainty. It's zero bit. So there you have um, there you have a decrease of entropy, but not because you have measured. It's because you have done something to the system. So it's not a, it's not this scenario. It's another scenario. Yeah, let me introduce just the final uh, in the last uh, part of the class. So, um, and, and, and we will uh, see it. So this is, I want you to understand very well the concept of mutual information, which uh, is the reduction of uncertainty because of a measurement. This is going to be super important in the Maxwell demon, because if we, if we are able to identify Shannon entropy with thermodynamic entropy, this means that a measurement also will decrease the, uh, the thermodynamic entropy of a system, and the decrease is given by the mutual information. So this is the first interpretation of mutual information. First interpretation, the decrease of uncertainty in a measurement. The second is this one, which is also important. Uh, this is a measure of correlations. And, um, and you can see, uh, we can rewrite this as follows. For instance, And this is the entropy of, of suppose you have a system that is composed by two subsystems, X and Y. This will be important. We will consider this as the system, and Y is, it will be the demon. So you have two systems, X and Y. The entropy or uncertainty of the system as a whole 
is the, uh, the uncertainty of x plus the uncertainty of y, one could think that is additive, like sometimes we say, ah, entropy is additive. This means that the entropy of, two syst of a system is the entropy of system uh, x plus the system of, of system y. But not, we have to subtract the mutual information. So the mutual information, which is a method of correlations, because it is uh, zero when they are independent, is also a way of expressing the entropy of the whole global system as the entropy of so subsystem X, subsystem Y, minus this correlation. So the correlations between two systems always decrease the total uncertainty, in this sense. I mean, the more correlations, if, if I somehow I, 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 I uh, um, destroy the correlations, the entropy of the system increases. And if I create correlations, the entropy of the global system decreases. Well, correlation is that they are not independent. Correlation, correlation is, uh, is, a, is, is a way of saying that X and Y are not independent. You can measure correlations using the typical correlation like that. This is what we call correlation in the statistics. But you can measure correlations in, in, in I mean, correlation is, a, is something that tells you that how one variable depends on the other. So this is a way of, calc of, of quantifying correlation. This is another way of quantifying correlation. So this is when I said correlation, I, I mean the, 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 the generic expression that one variable depends on the other. So you have different ways of quantifying this. One is the statistical correlation, the typical correlation. The mutual information is a measure or, 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 or that is a measure of, of, uh, of uh, correlations. No, the, the, the mutual information is between the two systems. It's something that... I have system one, x1, y1. Ah, x1, y1, x1, x2, y2. y2. So you have four, four variables. Yeah. No, it's not deterministic. When I? When I decrease the, the, the number of, of, of bits needed for, uh, for knowing something about the other system, and if I find the same number in both cases, can I directly compare actually the information between different systems or not? No, I, don't, I would say, well, you can find, you can say the same number. We will see that this mutual information will be related with the work. So to create correlations between two systems, you need a work which is equal to KT and the mutual information. So in this sense, you can compare it. But of course, the, the global entropy depends, uh, uh, depends. I mean, if the, two, if the two systems are identical, you of course you can, but, uh, but you can have this number equal in two, in two systems and then this, is dif this can be different. So I don't think it makes sense to compare. We will not... Uh, No, mutual information. Well, mutual information in communication theory has a very important uh, role because it tells you how um, how may, how much information can you transmit in a channel. Let's say by Wi-Fi or by Wi-Fi or by or by a cable or something like that. But uh, but I've not seen. So you can compare two channels. This is true to see which is more efficient. But uh, that's it. No, no, no. 
X is the state of the system. And this is not abstract. I mean, it's, it's general, but not abstract. It's, X is the state of the system. It can be a microstate, a mesostate, even a macrostate, whatever you like. But it's a random variable that uh, is the state of a system. Okay. Y is the outcome of a measurement that I perform on the system. So, The error in y or what, or why? Why could be yeah? Why could be? Uh, I mean, in a, in a measurement apparatus, the, oh, the the last the number that okay. you get. Yeah, there is a system, uh -huh. and there is the apparatus. So yeah. the apparatus tells you the, apparatus uh, the, the, the outcome. The outcome uh, is y and the. And then Yeah, yeah, yeah. So information, yeah, maybe this is also important. Information is the concept that you can talk about the, capa the information capacity of a system, which is the Shannon entropy. And usually, what is information? Information is something that uh, you receive. And uh, because you receive this information, you know more about something. And in this case, you receive why. You, you look, you observe why. And then this observation uh, decreases the uncertainty of the state of the system, which is X. So this, is, this is the idea. Yeah, yeah, it can be, well, mutual information, uh, you, can, you cannot do it, but it is not so, it is not so straightforward to generalize mutual information to several variables. Uh, for the problem? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that there are papers on that, but it is not, uh, I mean, we, we have not reached this uh, so general uh, case. There are, uh, Generalizations of many outcomes, not binary outcomes and so on, but uh, not many agents. Uh, well, yeah, maybe at the end of the course we can, we can discuss that. Okay, uh, I, I want to finish in, in, because we have to finish at, uh, a little bit earlier with the last, uh, the last concept The last concept is, uh, is um, uh, a mu uh, the Kullback relative entropy, let's call it. You have a, a single random variable. But, uh, uh, but you can have... You, Actually, the, the, the usual situation is that you don't know the probability distribution, or or you have uh, uh, the probability distribution can can be of can can be p x or can be uh, q x. So uh, and you don't know. This is a typical a typical problem in statistics. You have data. X uh, is a random variable, so you can make experiments and get realizations of X. You can get, uh, suppose that X is a, uh, is a, the typical example is that X is a number between 2 and 12, uh, but you don't know if, if uh, you go to another room and you, I give you two dice, and um, and and you throw the dice, and you give me this data. But I give you also a lottery, like uh, or or uh, so. You have a lottery. Uh, 
uh, with balls, and the balls are labeled from 2 to 12. So you go to the other room and you start to, to you choose one of the two. Of course, they are different. No, here the probability distribution is something like that. This is say, 6 to 12. And here the probability distribution is uniform. No, every, every number has the same probability to be, to be uh, obtained. No? So you start to give me numbers. There is a P or a Q, and I have to guess or to figure out w w which is the method that you have used, okay? This is a typical uh, problem in statistics, that uh, you have a model, you have several models, like, uh, or one model that depends on a parameter, but you have diff different uh, guesses of what could be the origin of your data. You are given data, and then you have to decide which one is. The relative entropy, or Kullback, it's called also Kullback Leibler divergence. Tells you how difficult it is to solve this problem. And it's defined as follows DPQ is uh, the sum over X of the joint distribution, uh, sorry, uh, Px uh, log of uh, Px divided by Qx. And you see that this is zero if P and Q are equal. And it's bigger than zero otherwise. So it's a measure of how different these two uh, probability distributions are. Some people call it a distance, but it's not really a distance because it's not even symmetric. So the kullback library divergence between P and Q is different from Q and P. And you have an exercise to grasp, to, to, to understand why it's not, uh, it's not symmetric. The Kullback library uh, gives you a, a lot of information of how uh, distinguishable are the two distributions, P and Q. For instance, it's, it's telling you that if you want to, uh, sorry, let me call log, let me, let me write log here. So you can use natural logarithms or whatever, or, or bits. You can measure it in bits as well. Um, there are some properties, we have the properties in the notes, but uh, the main properties is uh, that it gives you an answer to this question. Uh, to this question of uh, distinguishing between a probability distribution and another probability distribution. This is called the Steiner Lemma. And, and, and it tells you that if I have a N data. So you give me N numbers of, uh, of, you go to the other room, choose dice or, or lottery, you start to uh, extract numbers, and then you give me the numbers. You extract N numbers. And then I have to, uh, well, I, I can use the maximum likelihood. Uh, uh, algorithm or whatever. Uh, if I have, if n is large, I start to do the histogram, and if I see that the histogram is, is not uniform, it's like that, like that, then, I mean, the data will reveal what is the origin of, the, of, the, of, of these numbers, no? But how many data do I need? Or what is the, pro the error probability? The, the, error, the probability of, of having an error Um, the probability of the following er error uh, of guessing, probability of guessing P when Q is the real one.
or condition to. So let's let's think that Q is the real one. Uh, this is uh, this asymptotically goes like two to minus the number of experiments and and the distance, the relative entropy. So if the relative entropy is very small, you need a lot of data. So this is a, this is why the the relative entropy is 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 a measure of how easy it is to distinguish Q from P. And actually, this explains why it's asymmetric because sometimes. Maybe for me it's easy to dress up as a, as a, as a I don't know, I don't want to be politically incorrect, but uh, let's say uh, maybe you can confuse me with uh, uh, some, with, uh, I don't know, a lion, let's say. And, uh, but it, for a lion it's, it's harder to look like me. So <laughs> maybe it's easy, uh, maybe it's, m m Easier that P looks like Q than like Q, Q looks like P. Or this is why it's asymmetric. And you have an exercise to prove that. It, this is very, I mean, this is not very rigorous. Uh, you have in the, co in, in the book on information theory, you have, because you have to bound, uh, because you can always say that uh, it, this, of course, this, 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 this uh, result is independent of the method. You, you can have maximum likelihood, you can have other methods. Uh, but you have to, it's, I mean, this is just a, a very rough formulation of the theorem. The real one is Q, and you, uh, and you start to give that, and, and, and from your, your algorithm tells you that the, the answer is P. So you, this is an error, this is an error of probability. Yeah? Of missing, of uh, error. So this is the probability of, of, of uh, making an error in your guess. No, this has nothing to do with mutual information in, in, in principle. This is just how two probabilities are independent. Of course, mutual information, mutual information is uh, the distance between px, y, and, uh, and, uh, and px, uh, and px, times py. So mutual information is how different is the joint distribution from the product, which No, but here, here we have just one variable. This is important. Eh? In, in, in mutual information, it's about two random variables with some probability distributions. Here is a single random variable with two possible candidates for a distribution, which is completely different. Yeah, no, it was about a little bit more actually. I was wondering what, what, when actually should we use statistics Well, in physics, we will show that, uh, 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 for instance, mutual information has uh, energetic consequences and correlations are just an empirical thing, but, uh, but uh, the mutual information has much more physical meaning than the normal correlation in statistics. We will show this. Uh, no, mutual information, we will see that it is a free energy, that, it, that, that it's, it's directly related with the work you need to create correlations. Okay. More questions? Yeah, it's equal. This is a. Uh, this is which is not. It's not. I mean, uh, it's not. Uh, this is not trivial. Eh? That mutual. Um, for the definition is trivial. But if you think of the definition of mutual information as the reduction of uncertainty in X, once you know why, this means that 
or this is the information that y provides about x, it's surprising that it's equal to the information that x provides about y. So it's not trivial, eh? but it is true. OK, so you have a pair of exercises, one on the, on the relative entropy to, to understand why it's a, a no symmetric. And the second one is, uh, is to calculate mutual information in a CDR engine when you have an, a probability of mistake, I mean, of, of, of error. Of, of you measure, and, and, and the measurement apparatus tells you that the particle is in the right, but uh, it's, it's in the left. So you have a, an error. So you can combine everything, and tomorrow, we will see thermodynamics, and on Thursday we will see how the two information theory and thermodynamics combine together to, uh, to explain the Maxwell demon, the CLR engine, and so on. Okay.